So I want you to turn to uh, 3 John verses 1 through 4, and these are some scriptures that we're going to use to establish you. And he says this, I have no greater joy than to see, than to hear that my children walk in the truth. And so I want you to, I want you to understand that God's joy, God's heart is to see you walk in the truth. And we know that it's the knowing of the truth that sets you free. So God is pleased when he sees you, me, his children walking out uh, the truth of God, walking in freedom, not walking in bondage, not walking in the things that gripped us in the past, but his joy, his heart is for us to walk in the truth. Let's move on to Philippians 4 verses 1. I'm just giving you some scriptures to establish you in the truth. He says, therefore, my dearly beloved, he's talking about you. I'm, I'm establishing you in the truth in terms of how much God loves you. He says, therefore, my beloved and longed for my joy and my crown. I need you to understand before we unfold more of this truth. I need you to understand that in God's heart, when he looks at you, he sees you as his joy. He sees you as his crown. And I tell leaders this all the time. We always have to be concerned. I don't care whether you're leading Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, leading a church, leading in schools, leading an organization. We always have to be concerned about what happens to the people. And I'm trying to communicate to you that God has a heart for his people. And he says, my heart for you is you are my joy. You are my crown. And that word, that crown is a kingdom word. That means that you are a precious jewel. You are royalty to him. Let me give you another scripture that establishes, that establishes God's heart for you. First Thessalonians 2.19. He says it once again. He said, for what is our hope? Ha, ah, yea. For what is our hope or joy or crowned of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Go to verse 20. And then he says, for you, First Thessalonians 2 verse 20, for you are our glory and our joy. Very important. So he's, a, he's establishing that you, my daughter, you, my son, are my glory and my joy. Now we realize that sometimes our lives don't line up to God's expectation and God's heart for our lives. That's why we need good teaching. That's why we need good training so that we can uh, make sure that our lives line up with God's expectation. So we're talking about the goodness of God. And I want to give you this in um, Psalm 65, verse 11. This is, our, this is our anchor scripture. If I already know that I'm his joy, if I already know that I'm his crown, then I want to establish you in the reality of, well, what happens to my year? What happens to my days? God, how do, how, how do I ensure that my life is unfolding in the manner in which you intended for my life to unfold? So I don't have to live out my days being sad. So I don't have to live out my days being uh, depressed. And so there's a, there's a dimension of truth and it, it, it can be, it's enforced by the spirit of God that if you enter into this thing, it'll change your life. So here's what God's expectation is for our year. He says this, you crown the year, my God, you crown the year 2022 with your goodness and your paths drip with 
abundance. And so when God is talking about his goodness, this is what exactly what he means. He means that your year is going to be crowned with unbelievable joy, unbelievable kindness, unlimited favor, liberality in bestowing of gifts. In other words, there's great bounty that is that your year will be full of. When he says, I'm going to crown your year with goodness, he's saying that I'm going to release a degree of satisfaction upon your life. So when you walk out January, February, March, April, you're going to walk in a tremendous grace. And he says this, he says, every path, my God, I want you to get this, that the crowning of your year is connected to God's path for your life. And when you walk in God's path, you, walk, you are walking in his blessing. That's why all throughout the scriptures, there's a, there's a tie-in between his goodness and his path. I want you to write that down in the chat, that there's a connection between his goodness and his path. And he says, he's given us the imagery, my path, because I am a good shepherd, I'm a good God, mercy, uh, uh, goodness and mercy shall follow you all your days. Every path that I assign you to walk in, get the imagery, it's dripping with abundance. And that's why he says, that's why he says this, acknowledge me in all your ways and I will direct your paths. That's Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. And I acknowledge me in all your ways, and I will direct your paths.